welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point. This is a podcast based on a blog of the same name because around here we follow the mantra, you do you. So the name's sticking around because we do us. Capiche? My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and or checking out the blog at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For our Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU, exclamation point, hopes you've been following releases of brand new episodes of the podcast on Wednesdays, as well as new blog entries on some Tuesdays, and as always, we have several more new episodes on the way. Because the panelists and I live lives behind our podcast, the episodes are published once per week. Subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and via Google Play to stay on top of brand new episodes. Episodes already published discuss a variety of shows around the water cooler, including but not limited to Broad Church, New Girl, Game of Thrones, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Gotham, Supernatural, The 100, Once Upon a Time, Stranger Things, Doctor Who, and the Arrowverse, including Arrow, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl. We've published several episodes in our Looking Back series, covering such diverse shows as that 70s show, Gallivant, Six Feet Under, Futurama, and Ally McBeal. Plus, more episodes are in the works, including revisits for How to Get Away with Murder, Unbreakable Kenny Schmidt, and our American Horror Story series covering Roanoke, a revisit to our Marvel's Defender series when we talk Iron Fist, Final visits with our Grimm and Vampire Diaries panels to say goodbye to these long-running and ending series in two-part episodes. Plus, we'll be launching new panels covering 13 Reasons Why and Sense8, new series examining Sherlock and an anniversary retrospective about the Buffyverse covering Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, and because we also look back at shows now past, we'll be looking back at Person of Interest and Third Rock from the Sun. What's more, CPU from time to time goes live. We've appeared at Comedy Outlet Mondays at Dog Story Theater and at Grand Rapids Comic Con in Grand Rapids, Michigan while streaming live on Facebook. More live appearances are being planned, so make sure you like us at our Facebook page, our Twitter, follow us at CPU Podcast, our Instagram at Couch Potatoes Unite and or our Pinterest at CPU Podcast, or subscribe to the blog, our YouTube channel, our iTunes channel, our Stitcher Radio channel, or find us on Google Play. In the meantime, if you don't hear your show in this podcast format, fellow panelists and I still write reviews and we're always seeking new panelists. So if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello by finding us at any one of our outlets aforementioned. At the very least, stop by and leave us a thumbs up, comment, or review. We like feedback, but don't throw slushies at us. That stuff stains. Shame on you. Today's panel is looking back at an American musical comedy drama television series that aired on Fox from 2009 to 2015. If you aren't already aware, from time to time, CPU will be choosing shows of all types, but usually of some fame or notoriety, to reminisce about and to consider whether or not they age gracefully like a classic Journey REO Speedwagon mashup, or don't hold up as well, such as a different mashup of Rihanna's Umbrella and the classic Singin' in the Rain. What? As such, this is another chapter of our Looking Back podcast episodes, wherein we review a show that has been gone, either via natural end or cancellation for some time. And today, that show is the popular, but all too controversial, and somewhat divisive, generationally speaking, series called Glee. Glee focuses on fictitious William McKinley High School in Lima, Ohio, and its Glee Club, New Directions, which competes in the show choir competition circuit while its disparate members deal with a variety of social issues, including sexuality, race, relationships, and learning to become an effective team. Will Schuster, played by Matthew Morrison, takes over the Glee Club after the former teacher is fired for inappropriate contact with a male student. With a ragtag group of misfit teenagers, Will attempts to restore the Glee Club to its former glory while tending to his developing feelings for his co-worker, guidance counselor Emma Pillsbury, played by Jamie Mays, as well as defending the Glee Club's existence from the conniving cheerleading coach Sue Sylvester, played by Jane Lynch. A major focus of the series is the students in the Glee Club, their relationships as couples, their love of singing and desire for popularity coming into conflict due to their membership in the club, and the many vicissitudes of life in high school and as a teenager. The initial 12-member cast included Morrison, Lynch, Mays, Will's wife Terry, played by Jessalyn Gilzig, and eight club members played by Diana Agron, Chris Colfer, Kevin McHale, Leah Michelle, Corey Monte, Amber Riley, Mark Salling, and Jenna Ushkowitz. The series was created by Ryan Murphy, Brad Falchuk, and Ian Brennan, the latter of whom first conceived of Glee as a film. 
Glee features on-screen performance-based musical numbers balanced between show tunes and chart hits. Songs covered in the show were infamously released through the iTunes store during the week of broadcast, and a series of Glee albums have been released by Columbia Records. The music of Glee has been a commercial success with over 36 million digital single sales and 11 million album sales worldwide. Glee was nominated for 19 Emmy Awards, 4 Golden Globe Awards, 6 Satellite Awards, and 57 other awards with wins including the 2010 Golden Globe Award for Best Television Series, Musical, or Comedy, and Emmy Awards for Jane Lynch, guest star Neil Patrick Harris, and Murphy's direction of the pilot episode. In 2011, the show once again won the Golden Globe for Best Television Series, and Jane Lynch and Chris Colfer won Golden Globes for Best Supporting Actress and Best Supporting Actor, respectively. Gwyneth Paltrow won the Emmy for Outstanding Guest Actress. On October 17, 2013, in the wake of the death of Corey Monty three months prior, and one week after his tribute episode The Quarterback aired, Murphy announced that the sixth season would be the final one of the series. After 121 episodes and over 728 music performances, Lee came to an end on March 20, 2015. Today, for CPU's Look Back at Glee, three familiar voices have gathered together to form CPU's Answer to New Directions and to sing the praises of, or hurl slushies at, this acclaimed but controversial series. It should be noted, though, that all of our panelists have viewed the entire series and may discuss sensitive plot points, sight gags, jokes, or other things best enjoyed by the first watch of a comedy, musical or otherwise. So for those of you who haven't watched Glee, listen at your own risk as there may be major spoilers. At this time, I'd like to introduce our panel. Those who are CPU loyal should know the drill. I'm going to ask each of the panelists to identify themselves by their first name only, please. Tell us how you came to start watching Glee, what made you start, what kept you watching, how'd you find out about it, that old standard chestnut. And then you're going to gauge your interest in the show. And because this is a looking back episode, you get to provide two answers. You need to answer how you were or what your interest was at the beginning of the series and what your interest was at the end of the series. Are you ready, panel? Yes. yes. All yeah. right. So, how how would you rate your interest in Glee? You absolutely loved it. You would defend it until your dying day because your Glee Club gave you life, and this show renews that sense of purpose for you. You especially love how this teacher tries to rap, like Will Schuster. You loved everything about it. You think it was a star born, even if ultimately rough around the edges in the way that all true divas are, like Rachel Berry. You liked it because, above all, it was true to itself and what it was trying to be, even though that was sometimes unclear, like Kurt Hummel. Even though it had some rough patches, ups and downs, you loved the music and the show's unapologetic appreciation of the unconventional, like Blaine Anderson. You thought it was largely sweet and lovably clueless. It was turn off your brain, sing-along TV that everyone, even jocks, could enjoy, like Sam Evans. You appreciated what the show was trying to accomplish in terms of social context particularly with reference to LGBTQ plus issues, but you thought that some of the storylines came out of left field and that many of the primary players couldn't sing without the help of autotune, like coach Sheldon Beast. You thought it was a great stepping stone for honing future talent, but you also thought that the show was too Rachel-focused, which you felt prevented you from fully getting involved in the passion its fan base seemed to have for it, like Mercedes Jones. You thought it was a bit too commercial, lacking an auteur's perspective that would have grounded the show and made it a vehicle to which all age groups and societal cross-sections could relate. Also, let's face it, you enjoy movies and filmmaking perhaps a little more than high school glee club, even though you nurse a residual affection for it, like Artie Abrams, or you hated it and everything about it. You thought it was a miserable curse upon your existence and that it gave TV and your standard of unattainable excellence a bad name. In fact, you vowed every day it was on to destroy Butchin Schuster, the Glee Club, <laughs> and Glee itself, like Sue Sylvester. <laughs> Who would like to start? Hi, I'm Michael. Hi, Hi I'm Michael. Hi. <laughs> so I remember when Glee first started. I was out of college, I was an adult, and I was like, ooh, a musical on TV, that's rare. And it was like this big, huge thing, and, you know, I seem to remember that Fox had, like, a thing where it was just, like, you know, this teaser that was just really kind of not very specific about what the show was going to be, and it was just like, oh, it sounds cool. And so I started watching it as 
an interest in musicals because I love musicals from theater and I love the idea of a musical on TV. So I was very interested at first. As for the characters, I'm very, I'm kind of a mixture between Blaine and Coach Beast. Like I really when you started the series or when you ended the series. Or okay. Both? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I, I <laughs> forgot about that. We had to do the characters at the beginning. Okay, yes. so I probably was more Rachel at the beginning. I think was that one. You were. I'm yeah. Me, yeah. You loved everything about it. You thought it was a star born, even if it was ultimately rough around the edges and the way that all true divas are. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so definitely. <laughs> okay. At first, I was on the Rachel bandwagon, and also in that feeling and I'm now much more like Blaine and Coach Beast. I appreciate what it has done and I appreciate what the storylines and the focus on the social critique and the LGBTQ issues. I think that was a really good thing. So yeah. So you were Rachel at the beginning? Yes. Rachel at the beginning and more Blaine and Coach Beast now. Okay. Combination of the two. Welcome back, Michael. Thank you. You may have heard Michael on many of our other Looking Back panels and our Stranger Things panel. <laughs> I'm making the Looking Back thing a thing. <laughs> Your thing? Yes. Your CPU thing? Yes. All right. We're into it. Hi, Michael. Hi. <laughs> you do you, Michael. Yeah, I, yeah, I do that, yes. <laughs> I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hello. So I started watching this. Somebody told me, hey, did you see that pilot? I think the pilot was on in, like, the spring. Just yeah, like yeah, uh-huh. And I was like, no, I didn't see that. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm busy. I don't, I, you know what I mean. Like, sure. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> and so then when it was on the fall, I came across the songs on iTunes. And I'm like, okay, I got to get I gotta get to this. And I started watching it. And I think I watched to the middle of season two. And my husband said I had to stop because I hated it so. Like, every time I turned around, oh. I'm like, this is so dumb. It's not realistic. And he's like, you're working yourself up. <laughs> this is Nick for you loyal listeners. <laughs> I'm married to Nick, and he has to talk me down. Also, but I, I kind of still liked it, but I liked to hate it. I don't know if that makes sense. I think I was kind of a Mercedes. I didn't need to see so much Rachel all the time. I didn't find all of her storylines the most realistic mm -hmm. because I am from a small town. I do like to perform. I also work with kids that age, so I'm like, come on, get some reality. <laughs> so I stopped watching, and then I started watching it this summer on Netflix, and I think I ended as a Sam. You know what? It's just good fun for all. I love musicals. I love high school kids. I think they have a lot to offer. And if you don't analyze it too much, it's just good musical fun. Plus, my baby children enjoyed having it on. So, started as a Mercedes, ended as a Sam. Oh, Fair enough. That's and interesting. That's a good couple. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know, you know. Yeah. Welcome back, Sarah. Thank you. It's good to be here. Hi, I'm Emily. Hi, Emily. Hello, Emily. Hi. I don't remember exactly how I started watching. I can't remember if I watched a few episodes and then got the DVDs from Netflix. I think that happened somewhere in the middle at some point. And I remember that I watched through till about like, I think season four. And then I picked up and watched through until they did the tribute to Corey Monteith. And then I watched a little bit of like a tiny little bit of season five. And then I stopped and that was it. So then Last fall, I was bored in my dorm room, and my friend and I started watching it from the beginning again, and I'm like, okay, I need to, like, finish it. I'm gonna watch all of it. I'm gonna do it. But I remember when I first started watching it, I was definitely a Rachel. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I love theater. Theater's great. Like, musicals. Awesome. Kind of like all of us on the panel. <laughs> so <What>? I was... <laughs> yeah. I was definitely a Rachel, I think with a little bit of Blaine, or a little bit of Kurt thrown in there, too. But I Ending the show, definitely a coach beast with a little bit of Blaine thrown in there. Like, I thought it was good, but I think that some of the things were a little out there for yeah. me. <laughs> but overall, it was good. Well, welcome back, Emily. If you have been listening to our Once Upon a Time panel series, you will recognize Emily's voice. And of course, as for me, my name is Kylie, as I've covered in the introduction. And I started watching Glee. This was actually a show that I randomly caught, the, as someone mentioned, Sarah mentioned, the mm -hmm. pilot was on in the spring. Yep. Fox was really trying to market this one for whatever reason, and I, was, I think I was watching something else. And 
they started advertising there's going to be this show coming up and they showed you know the five singing don't stop believing and i was like what's this <laughs> because i like music i love the i like all the musics i like the theater musics and the rock musics and all the stuff so i was like i don't i guess i'll watch it and i did and the pilot is absolutely endearing it's a heck of a pilot mm -hmm. it is it a great really pilot. is yeah and yeah. i was like well i think i gotta watch this show mm -hmm. so i watched it i this is one of the ones i actually watched live from the very first episode they replayed the pilot in the fall and then it went on the first season's great and if you watch the first season you probably kept going after that, it was all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. But I powered through, and part of the reason why I powered through is because I really love music, as I mentioned. And if nothing else, what Glee did for me was remind me of songs I maybe had forgotten about or hadn't heard for a yeah. while, or yeah. introduced mm -hmm. me to like new music. Yeah, because I'm old too, and I just don't always know all the new music. So. That was probably yes. its biggest benefit to me. Personally. When they played CeeLo, the CeeLo song, yeah. I was like, what is this song? Yeah. <laughs> People were like, it's not that new. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Exactly. So when the show started, I probably would have been, you loved, I would have been Rachel, which is ironic because I'm going to talk about how much I don't like her in a very <laughs> space of time. But I did. Lo I loved everything about it. I thought it was great when it started. By the time we got to the end, I was I was somewhere between, and this is kind of a range. But and I know I wrote these. So I'm sorry. I wasn't going to say anything. I but know. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I've been thinking about. It. Sometimes I write them, and I know you know I'm writing yeah. this about me. But then some of them I'm like, eh. <laughs> Just I can understand that. I'm going. <laughs> so for this show, I think by the end, I was somewhere between Sam, because I thought it was largely turn your brain off, mm -hmm. sing along TV, and also Artie. I thought it was a bit too commercial, and yeah. it didn't ground very well, and it wasn't something that all age groups could really relate to. I mean, even in the pantheon of high school shows or shows about high school and teenagers, Sarah said it's not realistic, and I think that's spot on. I oh, really yeah. don't relate yeah. to it. Yeah. I don't see how anybody but millennials could, but that's just me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's get started talking about and looking back at Glee. We kind of got a temperature of the room around the water cooler, as we like to say. So at this point now, what you want to do is talk about the show in general. What did you love? What did you hate? Just have at it. This is a safe space <laughs> that people will hear. Yes. <laughs> that the internet is going to hear. Yeah. Yes. I really liked the portrayal of the struggle to get money, to get rehearsal space, to get kids involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a season one mostly thing. I mean, yeah. it kind of followed through, but they didn't have the fancy costumes. They didn't have expensive dance coaches. That's just, that's very realistic. I work at a high school. We, we don't even have a librarian. You know, like, it's tough out there. That being said, what I, I didn't like, and they were very talented singers, but not really dancers, and some of the other schools could do both, but yet they still kept winning. And yeah, that yeah. was a little like, I know they got heart, but come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. I, I, I love damn Yankees, but all you need is heart. Well, not all you need. <laughs> but, and so I liked, I kind of liked their journey, how they didn't win the first year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they went on and... One, I don't know. Every I was single a little, year after yeah. that. <laughs> so I liked where it was going in the first season. I loved that struggle. I liked the broken marriages happening. Yeah. It's very realistic, you know. I liked some of that. And then I, I think, you know, your Artie comment had a good point. It did get almost too commercial. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we're oh, the yeah, biggest yeah. school in the yeah. nation for this. Mm -hmm. Great, but it's not that realistic to me. Yeah. So that was kind of some of my first impressions. I When I first watched it, I absolutely loved it. I'm like, this is so cool. It's showing that side of the students that doesn't get the limelight that often well, in the show, they got the limelight all the time. But <laughs> in general, in life, rather than having another sports show, like another Friday Night Lights type of show, they showed all of the the nerdy kids that I I related to as a theater kid because that came out when I started doing theater. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is everything I want to do. I love this. But for me, by the end, it was just so much about, oh, we need to talk about this hot topic. We need to talk about this hot topic. It needs to happen. 
we need to sing the latest and greatest song, we need to make sure that Rachel Berry's always winning, and then in the end, she, I, I mean, in the middle there, she doesn't win, which was really refreshing for me when she had all of that inner turmoil about the, about Funny Girl and everything. That was when I finally started liking Rachel, because there was so long there where she was just so whiny and annoying, and I hated her. Yeah. <laughs> but then, my love for her came back for a little bit, <laughs> and then it went away again. I was just so all over the place. That show, it started out really strongly, and then it really just kind of took a crazy turn for me. Yeah, see, I feel like I'm going to be somewhat of a Rachel apologist oh. here. There's always one. Right? I mean, I'm, I completely see everyone's beef with that character, but I still feel like... For what I liked about her character was I liked her passion. I liked her drive. I liked the fact that she wanted... She wanted the fame, yes. She wanted to be somebody. A star. She wanted to be the star. A star is born. But, it, and it, but it, I feel like it came from a, an actual deep down... It, it didn't seem like a shallow want. At least not yeah. overall. I mean, I'm, there were definitely small little parts of the show where her quest for fame came off as shallow but it seemed like overall it just seems like her character was meant to have that passion and a heart for the performance and the fame and the adulation or whatever so i i don't know i just i like that about her character and i always kind of felt bad for her character when everyone was being like oh rachel ooh. You know, like, to be fair, yes. so here's mm. counterpoint. Yes, counterpoint, good. Point. Yes, good. I, <laughs> counterpoint is good. So, yes, I agree with all of that. And I, I think the, the character of Rachel, more than any other character, was given dimension when she quite yes. possibly had the least dimension to develop. Mm-hmm. Sure. With the possible exception of Kurt. I think yes. Kurt yes. was mm-hmm. given a lot of room to grow as well. Mm-hmm. Part of my beef with the Rachel character is that she was played by Leah Michelle. First of all, I love Leah Michelle. Why, do, why, does, why, does, Leah why do people not like Leah Michelle? See, I, I love that. Leah Michelle, but I hated Rachel. I don't like either of them. She's she was fine in the Spring Awakening. Okay, cast, yeah, uh-huh. but I don't like the way she sings. She's kind of a diva in real life. She okay. comes off very haughty mm-hmm. in real life. So I, I don't pay attention. I didn't pay attention to all that stuff. So I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I trust you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and to me, the Rachel character started off in that very centered place, mm-hmm. and I understand what you're talking about. Not a shallow passion. Yeah. And I related mm-hmm. to it for a long time, mm-hmm. but at some point, she became unrelatable. She okay. She became a caricature yeah. Yeah. of herself. Yeah. And a lot of that had to do with the commercialization and sort of the blow up of the show. Yeah. But I think a lot of it had to do with Leah Michelle. Okay. You know what I really liked about her, particularly at the beginning? There were all those girls that were on the Virgin Club or the... Yes, yeah. yes. And she was like, I'm attracted to you sexually. And I was like, good. Teenage people need to hear yeah, that yeah, it's okay yeah. to feel that way, uh-huh. and you need to know how to react. I liked that development in her. I liked that she liked this popular boy, knew she was probably out of his league, but continued... Not not that I think she is, but she was supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. And continued to go for him. Once they got together, I don't think they knew what to do with it, and it yeah, didn't oh, yeah, become totally. my favorite yeah. relationship. Mm-hmm. But I liked that struggle in her, because who hasn't been in love with a guy or a girl that you were like, oh, they're way out of my league, you know, or oh, yeah. whatever. So I liked that about her. I don't have any beef with Leah Michelle. I don't mind her. But my thing with Rachel is just like, I did not find it realistic that she got to just be the lead in a Broadway show her first time out of the gate. Oh, we, yeah. That's we have kind of many friends in this big, room yeah, that yeah, perform yeah. on Broadway, I should point out, yeah. Yeah. that have struggled and worked and gone to training and dance and this yep. and, and that. And just as talented, if not more so. And just yeah. because you think you're right for the part and you're, you're, you want it does not mean you're going to necessarily get it. So that was really hard for me to swallow. Yeah. And then... Her roommate magically comes in. What was her name? Santana. Santana. And there's her understudy. Yeah. What Mm -hmm. planet are we living on? Like, (laughs) come on. So that that whole thing, I was like, what? This is weird. Yeah. Well, that brings me to the New York season, which is season five. Yeah. I'm jumping around. Sorry. Yeah. 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 On on the one hand, I was like, 
And we can, you can sort of jump around, we don't have to go in order. Because there's lots of things about lots of the characters. But on the one hand, I thought, oh good, they're moving to New York, it's going to be fresh, it's going to be new, we get to see them as adults, we have sort of the split between the new, new directions and the old, new directions thing. Yeah. Where you yeah. have sort of the mm -hmm. Lee Project people yeah. cast, and then, you know, the rest of them. But everything that happened in New York was so far afield of anything relatable to real life. Yeah, I'm just going to waltz into Vogue and get this this internship and then magically get to try out for the school I want to be in and get that again. And exactly. Then, but then Blaine's going to yeah. go there too. It just, I was like, oh my gosh, kids are going to think you can just walk into New York and like, yeah. 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 whatever you want. Oh, and Sam's a male model. I don't yeah. know. This was Everything about, I lived in New York for five weeks. I can't say, oh my gosh, I know everything about living in New York, <laughs> but I, the five weeks that I was in New York, there were so many more hardships about it that they didn't even that touch nobody ever on. thinks about, yeah. And, my other thing about Rachel, too, that I was going to mention a little bit ago was that for her, for me, she just, she expected the whole world to be handed to her on a silver platter, and they, like, feigned her working for it and everything, but it was never, to me, to a standard that I'm like, this is really what a performer is actually doing. It's not that they're just rehearsing in Glee Club, and then they're going to go be on Broadway. They're in vocal lessons every yeah. day. They're dancing. They're doing all of this stuff, and it never seemed to me like she was working hard enough for it, and that she was just handed all of these things. But back to the New York thing, I agree <laughs> with with everything Sarah was just saying it's just like they they just handed her all of these things and there was none of the struggle with money they were none of them are working jobs working no. real well, they jobs were, they were singing waiters which yeah. that actually kind of made sense a yeah. lot of actors yeah. do that yes but it's not that but glamorous were, I never saw them pick up a tray of food yeah so I don't know and, what and they were living in that, that beautiful loft apartment yeah. and they were like oh this is a shabby loft apartment it's like yeah. no <laughs> okay that's the biggest apartment I've ever seen in New York. I don't know where you found that one. The square one. footage must be insane. Yeah. yeah. Where did you find the money? To, I don't even think they addressed whether or not it was rent controlled. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was just so many things that, like Sarah said, it, it was almost showing all of these teens watching this that, oh my gosh, if I want to go be on Broadway, all I have to do is go out and audition. And it's like, we've got our friend Kyle that's out in New York right now that was telling us that he's done 120 auditions in the three months he's been out there. And it's like, that's the reality of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reality within Glee was, oh, I'm going to walk into this audition because I have always wanted to play this role and I'm going to get the lead. The reality definitely bothered me a lot in the show in general. One of the things, too, that I guess I struggled with the Rachel character was highlighted in her relationship with Mercedes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, Ooh, that, oh, Anna yeah. Riley, mm -hmm. I just love her. Oh, my yeah. gosh, yeah. She's, she's so talented. And I hope that, I mean, I know she's doing, you know, they made references to albums she was making, and she's doing that in real life, and that's great. But she kind of hit all the, the beads of the Rachel character a little bit, you know. And I can't even remember anything she said, but they obviously had a lot of disagreements about it. And I really related to the Mercedes character because... I'm not saying I have any, like, talent, but I know a lot of those people that do have talent and always come second place. She's, like, totally the Susan Lucci or yeah. whatever of Glee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's an, I guess that's maybe part of my bias or my prejudice a little bit on the Rachel character because it's like, okay, so you've made her the ingenue. She's not really an ingenue because she's playing funny girl, but mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what you've yeah. made her, and you've created kind of this sort of, you know, vacuum of reality. And you're exactly right, Emily and Sarah. You both said it. You know, they're creating kind of this... They say your dreams will come true if you only reach for it, but then it's all, like, accelerated and <laughs> sort of the I-have-to-have-it-now culture that we walk. You know, yeah. It's just made more exaggerated and glee. Well, what you were saying about Mercedes, though, too, and that's another reason why I really loved her character, is that she really seemed to be the only one that actually struggled to do oh, things. Yeah, like, totally. they had her get that record deal and everything, and then they didn't they didn't want to do what she wanted to do, and so she's like, I'm out of here. This isn't what I, this is not me. I'm not going to sit, and I'm not going to do what you want me to do just because you think it's going to sell records. I'll go out and stand on the street and sell my own, but it's going to be me. That's what I really loved about her character, in contrast to Rachel's character, is that Mercedes 
Mercedes actually seemed to work. Yeah, they didn't show her doing all these vocal lessons she and everything. She was a background but, singer, though, yeah. which a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. She was with Beyonce. Like, go her. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she did at the end. But So that's why I really loved Mercedes as a character, too. And I just loved her sass. I loved mm-hmm. that she was not afraid to tell people what she thought. And her whole stance when it, it came to her and Sam dating, I loved that she like stood uh, stuck to her guns and was like, I'm not going to have sex with you. Like, we're not married. I, and I don't want to marry you just because you want to have sex with me. I loved that whole plot line with her because, again, it showed a real person, like, standing up for themselves and not just bowing down to, like, a man or whatever. I loved that one. Which is kind of refreshing because this Absolutely. show was a little bit... I'm going to use the word hypersexualized. Does anyone agree or disagree? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. There yeah. was a lot <laughs> of focus on it. Well, yeah, there was a whole... They made a huge deal out of the episode where they all lost their virginity. <laughs> like I mean, a virgin. At the same time. Episode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did anybody actually even do it in that song? No, no. Just <laughs> Not in the song. No. It was kind of a montage of yeah. people being in bed. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the more disturbing part about it, other than it being hyper I mean, teenagers have hormones, nobody's denying that, but your primary target audience or the ones that actually watched you consistently from season one through season six in your slot was ages 11 through 15. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm not a prude, but I kept thinking that to myself a lot when I would yeah. watch it. Like, 11 year olds watch this. <laughs> I, in, in Fox's defense and in Glee's defense, I think they were trying to aim towards the slightly older crowd, but because of the nature of their show, it wound up being focused on that 11 to 15 year old range. I think in their defense that they were aiming for the 15 to 18 ish range, but because of just the nature of it and being like a musical type show, those are typically the younger audiences. And so that's kind of where they fell short. I think the whole hypersexualization, it was just re- after I rewatched it, I was like, oh my gosh, there's you know just so much about, about this. This is what was annoying. It was like it was convenient. Oh, we don't have so and so dating anybody, so they'll just hook up this time. Yeah. Oh, well, we yeah, need somebody yeah. to be gay with Santana, so we'll make it Brittany, even though she's clearly slept with all of these boys. Now, maybe yeah. she's bisexual. I think she's kind of omnisexual. And yeah. that's yeah. fine. <laughs> but at times it was just convenient. Oh, she's not with anyone right now. Well, they'll get back. Oh, but now she's with Artie. Oh, but now Art, we need someone to be with Artie, so yeah. she'll just do it. I was like, this isn't really, you're not giving them feelings. I just thought it was like, weird. Sam's with Mercedes secretly at the end of one season. But then he went away. Where did he go? Oh, wait, he's back later. They're together. It's like, he's poor and living in an he'll, apartment. He'll hit on Quinn. Oh, now he'll hit on, it's just. Yeah. They always had to have somebody with somebody yeah. else. They can never have somebody just be like, oh, well, you know, this isn't working out for me, or yeah. I don't want to be because, involved. I want to focus on something. Yeah. Like, I just watched the very end of the show, like, in the last two days, so I'm like, oh, it's all fresh in my mind. Like, a perfect example of that was Tina, when Tina was like, I'm going to go propose to Mike, and Artie's like, you're not even dating him. And she's <laughs> like, well, I just love him, and we've always, we've always connected, and I just love him. And so she does, and Mike's like no and then she's all upset and we're like but it's because you're not together maybe (laughs) i don't know and then in the end she ends up with Artie anyway and it's like oh okay quinn and puck same thing we'll just make them get together because we can't think of anything else for them to do yeah yeah it's like finn and rachel are back together so now quinn needs to be with puck because she can't be with finn so it it was all over the place it's very convenient yeah, same with Marley. They did that later with Marley and Puck and Ryder, with Jake and Ryder. All of them like had that super weird love triangle that was just beyond confusing. Marley and Ryder got married in real life, and then they got divorced. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. Good. <laughs> yeah. Push Marley off a bridge. <laughs> well, she's busy being super girl. I yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> So she's flying. It's a bit of a step up, isn't it? Kind of, it? Yeah. It kind of is. Yeah. Well, and I think you kind of hit on it. it maybe it, hypersexualization is being prudish or being old <laughs> about it. What I think you're hitting on is there was no emotional consequence. Right. Yeah. Really there really with. wasn't. 
they sang about some stuff, and sometimes the song's marginally related to what yeah. they were dealing with, <laughs> yeah. and Otherwise, sometimes they didn't. <laughs> the word just happened to be in the song, so that's why we're singing it. It's like... Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was definitely the thing I did not like about the show, was I, I call it soap opera, par- like the soap opera aspect of it, where it was just like, you know, there was... All of, all of these, it's everything that Emily and Sarah has been talking about, that everyone had to be hooked up with somebody else, and there was all that manipulation of the relationships, and it was just like, it was like a soap opera. and It, it was just drama for drama's sake in the soap opera sense, and that's the thing that always, that's the thing that really turned me off about the show. So what about some of the more mature relationships, specifically Will and Emma. I loved their relationship. Theirs was one of the few relationships I actually enjoyed watching in the show. At the beginning, it was a little, like, actually it was in the middle. And there was, a, there was a period of time there where it was very annoying. And, like, it was, I'm trying to pinpoint, it was after Will and, what's his wife's name? Terry. Terry. Yeah. After Will and Terry got divorced, and he's like, oh my gosh, like, we can be together. They kiss in the hallway super cute and then they broke up for a while it's because will was being annoying i'm like okay who would pick whatever. him over john stamos but no that one. yes <laughs> exactly <laughs> by the way not reality not because <laughs> i'm just a fan of john stamos yeah i've met him you um, have i have a picture on facebook of me and him and all my sisters what okay Okay. He was at he was at the FFA I'm only National a Convention. From John Stamos. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, he touched me. He had his arm around me. Ooh. Wow! Okay. I pushed my little sister away to get to him. <laughs> That's right, Hannah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I I loved where their relationship. My favorite part of their relationship was when Will was really working on her to help her get past all of her issues with the germaphobeness. I'm like, okay, this seems like the most realistic relationship in the show right now so that was when i really did enjoy them but will for me got kind of annoying towards the end will yeah. for me was annoying a lot of the time <clears throat> i wanted to like his character so badly i i don't know maybe i just felt like i related to him in some way but oh man he just like he would get so freaking annoying with the whole like today we're going to be singing about this big issue and yeah. This week's <laughs> lesson. Yeah. No, you're not having lessons. You're doing the same three songs for about six months to prepare. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. We're just gonna try out this other song just to prepare us for nationals, and it's like, no, that's not what you do. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> even in orchestra, I was never in choir. I was in orchestra, and we only played the same three songs mm-hmm. for until our concert, and then we change. Yep. It was never mm-hmm. that we were just testing out the water. It was just well, to see. Well, to be fair, would you want to watch that on? No, no, I would not. No, that was called Smash, but it... <laughs> oh, Smash, burn, <laughs> shade. But I will say that the whole, whether he's annoying or not, whether you like Will Schuster or Mr. Shu mm-hmm. or not, I think he was a great foil Yeah, my personal yes. favorite character of the entire show, which I don't know what this says about me, is Sue. There was okay. so much about Sue <laughs> mm-hmm. that I absolutely loved and so much that I absolutely I loved her when it was I loved her as a character, but I hated her storylines. I hated that she was so back and forth with liking Glee Club yeah. and not liking Glee mm-hmm. Club. It just was such an overdone plot line. It was that same plot line for her every single season. Oh, I love Glee right now. Nope, I hate them. I love them. I hate them. That really, really bothered me, but I liked Sue as a character, so I agree with you. Well, but we needed a good villain. I yeah. don't yes. feel like any anybody else that they tried to set up as a villain, whether it was Carmen Thibodeau or whether yeah. it was the, the, the whatever the cheerleader Cass- Oh, I was thinking of Cassie the, the dance. Cassie. The vocal adrenaline. Vocal adrenaline. <clears throat> any of those. I didn't feel like they really quite measured up. Like I think they just should have I hated it when then she like secretly helped them. Like just don't let her. Just have her yeah. be mean the whole time. Yeah. I really enjoyed her ambition. I liked that about Sue. Mm-hmm. I obviously loved the storyline with her sister and oh, Becky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. an issue that's very close to my heart, and I really 
really yeah. enjoyed that. I loved Becky's character so much. I loved her relationship oh, with Oh, she was great. She, she was, was so sassy. Though. She was so but, good. I you know related what? to that. She got increasingly sassy, almost to the point of like, what? And then in the end, they kind of called her out on it. Like, yeah. the other kids were like, Becky, you can't. <laughs> like, you're not you're nice. Really you mean. really mean. And she was like, oh. Which I like, because that's just a normal life, you know? Mm-hmm. And I like that they didn't make a big deal out of the fact that she had Down syndrome, and then when, you know, her sister died, and she fired Becky, and then she took her back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just thought it was beautiful. Like I said, it's a personal, that's a cause close to my heart, but I we've, we've wondered before on American Horror Story panel, does Ryan Murphy have someone in his family with Down syndrome? Oh, He's always yeah. embracing mm-hmm. that, and mm-hmm. not in a... Oh, they're so cute. Way he's yeah. just very it's much very like, real. Very come be yeah. in our lives. You're mm-hmm. in our lives. Come yeah. be on our shows. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And I that's one thing that I absolutely loved about this show that I was thinking about last night in preparation for this panel was that I loved all of the diversity that they did embrace. Yes, they did play to some of the stereotypes, all of the stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't say that they only did some, but I did enjoy that they did embrace the diversity. Like, they had Becky, they had Artie in a wheelchair, they had Tina and Mike, and they, again, I said that they did play into the stereotypes, uh-huh. which was annoying, but I'm glad that they did still include those people and they didn't completely whitewash it, like yes. so many shows are doing now. I think, yes, I agree, although a lot of the characters who are not white went away before yes. the end of the show. Yes. So I think they were ultimately more caring about individuals with disabilities, and I think they were extremely focused on LGBTQ+. Plus. Mm-hmm. But when it came to racial sensitivity, I didn't think they always got it. Yeah, no, I agree. No. Even though yeah. it was a subject of discussion quite a bit. Yes. Sue is an interesting character from my perspective. I love Jane Lynch. She is so... So good. I mean, she's just absolutely perfect for that role. I mean, she basically has made an entire persona out of it from playing that character. And I personally like the idea of the villain that has the heart of gold... It can be a little overplayed, as it happens on many different shows now, but I, I, I definitely don't like the idea of the flip-flop part of her character, where she, you know, she would be like, good one moment, or good one season, and then suddenly she'd be angry at the Glee Club. And I have it a would counterpoint be, for that, yeah. too. Oh, well, that's okay. good. At least until the last minutes, because obviously she came around and was happy with them, such yes. as she yeah. was. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it seemed to me like she only flip-flopped when it benefited her. Yes. Oh, yeah. So it's Mm -hmm. like, I don't know if she was really flip-flopping as much as she was just being opportunistic in her villainy. That's true. That's a really good point. And she's played by Jane Lynch. Who is funny. Yes. <laughs> Hilarious. That's, I I think she did such a fantastic job in that show, and she brought, I think she brought much more humor than was even intended in the script. I mean, I'm sure a lot of it was from the script, but they did such a good job of letting her just... Stuff for her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. She mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. so funny. What did you think about her being president, though? Well, that was dumb. Yeah, was oh, really my God, dumb. that's... Oof. Actually, yeah. one of my least favorite parts of the show is when she married herself. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was so weird. I was like, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I'm pretty single, but I don't think I would be so single no. as to marry myself. I there would be just weird. my cats. She, like she had some weird little plot things happen when she wasn't hating the Glee Club, like when she got pregnant, and then she was never actually pregnant, and, oh, and but she daughter. was, and then she just had a baby. It was like, all of a sudden, oh, okay, you have a baby, where, why, <laughs> why did this get brought up? I do love, again, that it was... Her daughter a, had Down syndrome. Had Down syndrome, yeah. It. I, I thought it. that was really great, but it, it was just one of those weird plot lines. She, she also fangirled over the Kurt and Blaine relationship. Yes, that was so great. <laughs> Which came out of left field to me. It did. If they, had been, if they had developed this sort of enthusiasm, because she always called... What did she Porcelain. Call her? Porcelain. So I, if they had developed kind of this secret affection for those two all along, like little hints, I would have been like, okay. But that came off a that little was like so single weird. white female in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. I, I loved that little plot line and that she was like, we need to get them back together at the, at the end. I'm like, okay, I, I, I kind that of like that. But like you said, it was completely out of left field. It was like, oh, okay. It made me 
very uncomfortable. The whole Hurt Locker, just in general. Yeah, Hurt Locker. That was so creepy. It had clowns in it, didn't it? Yeah, voodoo dolls and like weird things. It was scary. It was like American Horror Story. I blocked it out. I don't remember. I I don't remember. It was like season six, middle of season six. She had this entire storage unit that she had. Oh, did Becky go smash it up? No. Did she? I don't remember. I just watched I it remember. and I don't remember. Man. But <laughs> Becky Becky led the superintendent of the school oh, in there, though. Yeah, totally yeah. And there's that whole adding the 11-year-old or 13, 13-year-old because he just had his bar mitzvah into the, <laughs> into the glee club. That was just another weird little thing that yeah. happened. All these little plot lines are coming back to me. What about the Kurt and Blaine relationship? Much Ballyhoo and Tuda was made for them. I loved it at the beginning. Hated it when they got to New York. I I was right along with them with wanting them to break up. I'm like, let's just end it. Let's get it over with. And then at the end, when Kurt was like, okay, I actually love him, I thought it was very rushed because I think it was very much stemmed from... Kurt seeing Blaine with Karofsky and feeling a lot of jealousy and so then I think he just jumped back into having those feelings for him and it wasn't it wasn't true they weren't true feelings I mean yeah they ended up getting married but that was weird I feel like I mean I love both of them as you know I like the actors I like Chris Colfer I like Darren Chris. I think mm-hmm. they both did a yes. good job it was a very sensitive portrayal. I get all of that. I also feel like a lot of it was forced. Yeah. Look, we're making a point right now. That was basically the whole kind of sum of the last couple of years. Let's have a double, yeah. let's have a gay double wedding yes. so we can show everybody that it's okay for men to marry men and women to marry women. Yes. yes. Which I think is an okay Great concept. Message. Great message. But it message, was just but, like, well, yeah. you guys don't even really like each other, you two couples, but you yes. can share a wedding. Yeah. 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 With your Glee Club friends from high school. It just was weird. I was like, yeah. oh, man, I don't need any of those. Yeah, I agree. There were a lot of the kind of topical issues that they covered that felt a lot like that. Like, one of the big ones for me was when they did the school shooting. That was one uh, of those episodes yeah. that I'm like, okay, there was a mass shooting, and so now we're just going to throw it into an episode of Glee because it, it's a big topic right now, so let's just make it a Glee episode. There were a lot of things like that that I felt like the the double gay marriage did too it was it was more of a oh we need to talk about this and make it all right within the context of our show and hope that everybody else agrees but and also coach beast uh, i was yes. gonna say <laughs> yep which you know i am all for trans rights and the dialogue needs to be had mm-hmm. however she was not she was not talking about he was not talking about being a man all up until season six and mm-hmm. all of a sudden it's like I've always wanted to be a man. Yeah. There was this whole storyline about With her dating when she was a sheep. Yeah. And I'm going to mess up pronouns. Yeah. Uh, we don't do it on purpose. We're not trying to be insensitive. <laughs> exactly. Yes. But yeah. Dot Marie Jones in her portrayal up until the trans storyline her whole thing was finding acceptance of how she looked, mm-hmm. how she felt. Who and then she, she was, was as an individual. Abused. Yeah, That was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She married what's-his-name, and then, what was his Co- name? Was it? Cooter. Yeah, it was. She married Cooter, and you're like, oh, now she's get, getting her apple ever after, but she didn't. Yeah. And that was great, and they helped yeah. her get out of it. And I was like, wow, what a good message for people. Like, she was vulnerable. Mm-hmm. It can happen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden... They're like, well, we need to have somebody be trans. How about you, which Dr. Was, Jones? Yeah. The most obvious. The most obvious. Yeah, which and is I, funny because they had Unique. They had Wade Unique yeah. Adams that was suppo- that I thought was supposed to be that topic on it. And I think for him, maybe it was more that he was just cross-dressing. I think that was his thing. I, yeah. Gender expression. Gender yes. expression. So I thought that one was really weird. I th- when you brought back up the whole relationship of Beast and Cooter, I think yeah. the things that worked best for them when they were talking about the different topical things was when it was something that lasted for more than one episode. If it was an, a little arc there, that's when it seemed to do better. But when they just throw it in for one episode and then never talk about it again, that's when they really were losing people. It seems to happen a lot with Klee, where it'd be like, <laughs> yeah. hey, there's this topic on this one episode and then you or you drop a storyline randomly and you pick it up 
three or four episodes later, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree with all of this because it seems like that's when I really started to disengage from the show. Was when they the school shooting episode was a really good example because I remember thinking, God, this almost feels opportunistic. Yeah. yeah. Rather mm-hmm. than we're trying to tell you, you know, an important story. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it felt a lot like then, we're trying to commercialize this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like how it came out and it was Becky. Yeah. I like how Sue covered for her, but it just didn't sit well with me to have an in- individual with maybe an intellectual disability, and they didn't die. Well, yeah. that's just like <laughs> smacks of who's the least likely character uh-huh. we can have to be the shooter. <gasps> oh, Becky, it's a huge surprise, and it's just like, I would really? Have, I would have Come liked on. it much more if it was a random part, like just somebody completely random. That would have, I think, sat a lot better with me. It would have made a much more of an impact than having somebody that we knew, a character that we recognized. I think that just made it a cheap, a cheap gimmick. Mm-hmm. It felt contrived. Yes. Very, very contrived. I don't know if there are any other characters you want to talk about. There's one that I want to hit on, which is Finn. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Like Corey Monteith. So Corey Monteith died of a drug overdose in during the fifth season. Mm-hmm. He was kind of on. He was also dating Leah Michelle in real life. The character of Finn was kind of on this trajectory, almost to be Mr. Shu's successor. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And was kind of on the outs with the Rachel character at the point that all of this happened. Any thoughts about that? It was a significant event that kind of was the, no pun intended, the you-know-what now for the show. It just, it kind of, yeah. they were forced to end it. Maybe yeah. Because they mm-hmm. they had to readjust so quickly. They, they, on the show, didn't say how he died. No. Nope. They never no. made reference <clears throat> to it. Yeah, it was just a rant. It was just how like, do you guys feel? It was just that. that he was die- that he died. I think I think that's a respectable way to do it, just given his situation, rather than saying, "Oh, Finn went off to school and went overdose on drugs." I think that was a it was a respectable way to kind of still honor him, but not necessarily. I don't want to say make light of his actual situation in real life, but to still. To give him a closing without without ruining what was going on in real life because that was such a heavy thing to happen to not only the cast but to the fan base. I mean, everybody, I remember when that happened, everybody was devastated. It was mm-hmm. such a sad yeah. thing that I think that if they had just made something up in the show, it would have it would have not sat well, at least not with me. You think so? Like, what yeah. if they just said there was an accident? If they had said something like, oh, there's an accident, that I probably would have been okay with it. But I'm, I'm more glad that they just left it and said, he, he died, he's gone. God, it bothers me so much. <laughs> it does. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, it just bothers me. It's like they just didn't know how to address it, so they chose not to. And I think it was, like you said, I think they were trying to be classy. Mm-hmm. But it just was weird to me. Yeah. It made me think Finn committed suicide. That's the taste it left in my mouth. Yeah. Which is a whole other issue. Oh, yeah. I mean, and there's something to go in there if that were the case. You know, there'd be a story there. Of all all the social topics to talk about that, suicide is one that they never did touch on. They never talked about that one. Which is surprising. Yeah, because they talked about literally everything else. But they're going to leave all of the mental health and suicide alone, which is a topic that I think they could have done very well. I think that if they had taken that topic and done that instead of some of the other things like all of the trans stuff, I understand its need and everything and its importance, but I think if they had touched more on some of the, the mental illness stuff, that's the stuff that kids are dealing with much more frequently than some of the other topics that they dealt with. I liked, I mean, I liked the quarterback episode. I thought, yeah. I thought it was a nice tribute, but I, I agree with Sarah's perception. I, it was almost treated like he had killed himself, Yeah, which essentially is what happened in real life. I mean, although on the time, True. it wasn't yeah. purposeful. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it felt just like so many of the things that actually hedged to be serious, it felt a little opportunistic. Yeah. It almost felt like, on the one hand, they had to address it, and they had, I think, you know, had to make some kind of something, but it also was meant clearly to be a catharsis for the cast, Mm -hmm. and maybe even a catharsis for Leah Michelle, because there was a lot of focus on the Rachel character. 
and that's fine, but I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough balance. I just don't yeah. know if they struck it. Yeah. With the episode. I remember thinking to myself, well, okay, that's really sad. I think I wrote a review about it in the early days of the blog. Like, okay, but you know, this was good. Yeah. I don't know if it was sufficient, though. Yeah, I I can see that too. I I can see where there it was a it's a very fine balance, and I don't think that they did quite get to that balance point. Mm-hmm. But I think they did err on the side of caution when it came to getting to that balance point, though, which I would I, which I appreciate. I think that if they had gone over that, everybody would have been in an uproar and been like, "Why did you do this? You this was supposed to be a nice thing, and you took it to a wrong place." Would you want would have wanted more of a story arc involved with that, or more than just one episode? I don't know if it was more than just one episode. I think maybe there should have been. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe there mm-hmm. should have been more than one episode. Okay. Because hmm. I think that kind of goes to what Emily is saying. Like, yeah. Well, so many of the serious issues were one episode and done. Yeah. Whereas yeah. others that were maybe still serious but ultimately played up for laughs went on and on and on forever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Repetitively to the point of tedium sometimes. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know. It's it, and it's and it's tough. This is Glee. It's a musical comedy by nature. But if you're gonna tackle the serious subjects. You might as well do it with some kind of deference. Yeah. Know? It also begs the question, though, where where did they plan on going with the show? I think, in my mind, they were planning on having Matthew Morrison leave the show. At some and point, have, yeah. And have mm-hmm. Finn take over. But going back, like, thinking back on it now, and then having just finished the series... I don't like the way that they ultimately made Sam almost replace Finn. To me, it felt like Sam almost became the replacement Finn. And I think Sam was such a great character in his early days, and then towards the end, he just became this crazy... It was a cartoon, Yeah, Yeah, in his early days, he had a lot of heart. Mm -hmm. He was very... He was still intelligent. Yeah, he was kind of that dumb blonde, but he was still intelligent. He had moments of inspiration yeah exactly (laughs) but then towards the end he became more of that big kind of goofy character that finn was and i didn't like that i liked quinn a lot we didn't talk about her we can i really enjoyed her i thought that if the whole teen pregnancy thing was a little weird for her but overall i liked that arc and Mm -hmm. i I just always enjoyed her i don't know why i actually didn't mind i know that you mentioned her and puck as like, well, she's with her and she's with him. But I actually liked that coupling just yeah. because Puck was so much the opposite of Quinn. And mm-hmm. so they and they played well off each other. Now she got into a fight with Ryan Murphy <coughs> and he went off and committed crimes of a not- yeah. She got in a fight with Ryan Murphy. Yeah, I didn't know that was the reason why she wasn't on the show for a while is because apparently she either publicly said something or at least got into some sort of disagreement with him. Ooh, it was in the press for a while. Of course, how much of that is true, I don't know, but... Who knows? Who knows around I always place. loved Mark Sound. Like, I loved Puck. I thought Puck was really dead sexy. I thought he was <laughs> And I enjoyed yeah. everything. I liked... We didn't talk about Lauren... Lauren oh, I man. loved Lauren Zizes. <laughs> she was there for like five minutes. <laughs> I don't care. I loved. Well, she was in season one just as like. A, yeah. And then I, I liked her. They were like, nobody else will be at her glee club. You do it. She's like, all right. I'm not really. I don't like sing. Okay, here I am. <laughs> yeah. I loved her. I loved her. And I, I thought, okay, there's another convenient pairing. But I actually enjoyed it because <laughs> yeah. she was like, no, I'm not into you. Yeah. yeah. But then he helped her sing, like, I know what boys like. I like that. <laughs> and then she went away, and I was like, where did Where no yeah. explanation. Yeah. But there back was to the so final money. episode, I really enjoyed yeah. her. But then, of course, he, went, he turned out to be a total perv in real life, so I'm like, you kind of ruined that for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I never liked his character. Whenever he was on screen, I was just like, oh, I don't want this to happen right now. Oh, I, <laughs> I thought he was cool. I, I actually him. really like Artie. I do, oh, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Artie was one of my favorite characters. He was another one that seemed to be a lot more realistic and and have a good head on his shoulders than some of the other characters. 
all of his struggles in New York. He was the only one that actually struggled in New York <laughs> out of all the characters. He was the only one that dealt with muggings. Granted, they don't happen quite as frequently as they portrayed <laughs> but because in the time I was there, I never experienced one. But his his struggle with wanting to to fit in and to do all like all the dancing with the kids and everything. I thought that was that was nice. The only thing I didn't like about him is why they dressed him like such a horrific nerd all the time. <laughs> yeah. Come on. He's in a wheelchair. He's not blind. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I considered it sort of the intellectual uniform he yeah. was wearing. <laughs> One of my favorite episodes was when he did safety dance. Uh-huh. Yeah. Me too. I love Me that too. episode. He yeah. actually was in a boy band in real life. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. You know, and they gave a lot of flack for saying, why don't you just cast a real person in a wheelchair? But I think... Oh, yeah, I remember that. They yeah. wanted the ability to do some of that fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think they sensitively portrayed it. I mean... Yeah. I, that's a whole other topic I don't know about. Yeah. To they had, that they did a nice about. job of showing him being, like, handled, I guess, by other characters. It's not like he was always in the wheelchair or always standing. There was a lot of that kind of in-between, though, too, that I appreciated, that I thought they, they handled well. Like I, mean, I said, I think they treated characters with disabilities well. Yeah. They gave them really good dimension and made them human. Yeah. When it didn't always happen before mm-hmm. in TV or movies or yeah. anything like that, so him included. What did you think about? And before I, I'm going to switch to the music in a second. But what did you think about the new class? Ugh, Which the one? Kitty and the Marley and the Ryder and the Jake and they were no. there for a season. <laughs> they were no. there for a season and then completely gone, except for Kitty that came back at the end again. Yeah, what her? <laughs> I, of all of the characters, well, Marley like, was busy. Melissa Benoist was busy. Yeah. She didn't even come back for the finale. She no. was the only one. Yeah, I was like, okay, that whole class, but there was also... I don't care. There was also <laughs> the Stupid. leprechaun guy, I don't know what his <laughs> name was. Like. No, I don't Who's think it's Rory. Rory. Yeah, it Rory. Rory. There was also Rory that was thrown in there. I liked that they had Allie, Allie, oh shoot, what's her name? She was the other one in the wheelchair that was on the Glee Project. She was there for a minute. She went on to be in the Spring Awakening Revival. Allie Stroker. Okay. That's who it was. I didn't watch the Glee Project, so I didn't know I, these people were coming from it. I was just like, yeah, who no. are these people? Yeah, that's what and, I did, too. And the whole thing with Marley and her mother, how her mother, you know, was a larger lady. A large lady. And yeah. Marley was a stick figure. Yeah. Something uh-huh. there is... Then Kitty gave Marley an eating disorder. I'm just like, do we have to do this? It felt forced. To me. Yes, it did. Has so many things. <laughs> yeah. So many things on Glee. So speaking of forced, well, let's talk about the music. Yeah. Whoa, I was gonna say the only burn. other character we never talked about was Tina. We oh, didn't talk Tina. about Brittany. Fondue oh, for two. Fondue oh, for two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good dish. Fondue for two. Yeah. We do have to spend some time with Brittany because Brittany S. Pierce her is my Brittany favorite Pierce, character yes. in the whole show. <laughs> favorite character, and Tina's my least favorite. There it is. Uh, poor Tina. That. Tina's, Tina's writing was poor. She was so bad. Girlfriend she was just so bad. Really what to do with her. And, and she was so she annoying. Was, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Faking yeah. the stutter. And she and was the... by far the most whiny and annoying she person on the Why entire show. Why was she show. so, like, crazy? Mm. They forgot yeah. about her, I think. They I did. Think. They yeah. totally did. I think yeah. they wanted her in there, and then they got tired of the stutter, so they wrote that out. But yeah. they just yeah. kept mm-hmm. making her... I don't know. So whiny and... and she oh, has okay. a nice singing voice. She's, yeah. yes, a very talented actress and singer. And yeah. dancer. She's a good dancer. Yeah. We I can go know. back to Brittany. I love Brittany. <laughs> She's my favorite. I just felt... Oh, I just needed to say that. That girl, too. Heather Morris, has the best line delivery. Oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. She doesn't She's oversell so it. Great. She just blatantly states my f- and... The, my favorite thing about Heather Morris, though, and playing the role of Brittany, was that originally she was just brought on to be a backup dancer, and yep, that was all yep. they wanted, and then mm-hmm. her character slowly grew, and then she wound up being my favorite character. Her line delivery, the lines in general, her just general character, she had so much heart, and you could feel it, but she was so simple, and I loved her. I loved the her. Britney Britney episode. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Where yeah. She, her Where teeth were like all red and they mm-hmm. made her go to the dentist because uh-huh. they were chewing. They look over and she's like, what? I brush my teeth with Coke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just awesome. I loved it. And she she really 
came out in the episode as a huge talent. Yeah. With her dancing and... and oh, yeah. I, I love... She's... Yeah, that was a huge it. breakout yeah. episode of the show, I remember. It was... Yeah. I think one of the best episodes was the whole Britney Best Years episode. I have to say shout out to Mr. Tubbington. Or is it Lord Tubbington. Lord Tubbington. Lord, Tubbington. Lord, <laughs> Lord and Lady Tubbington. Right. She got Lady Tubbington later. Although, I really struggled a little bit. Of course, I'm not... I'm straight. But I struggled with her relationship with Santana. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. I it, it always felt like, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm all for it. You know, girl power. Yes, of course. Married, definitely. I you felt need... like they didn't match. <laughs> yeah. They, there were a lot of things in it. It felt, again, very forced. Like, a lot of things on this show felt, it felt like they're, we need to, we need to make a lesbian couple. And, I mean, I guess it makes sense that it is the two Cheerios. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. so like, okay, I can get that. But they were so completely different in so many ways that it just wasn't quite there for me but i love i love Brittany. i do love santana too santana like i i like her as a foil to rachel in the show that was the only time i liked her yeah putting santana against rachel i thought was funny because she always had her long string of insults (laughs) those are my favorite oh yeah (laughs) but then santana beyond that it was kind of hard for me to because i'm all for direct talk Mm -hmm. like i appreciate that yeah it got to be like, okay, that's a little too mean, and I'm getting tired of listening to you talk. So, so my, sorry, Naira, there. Some of my favorite <laughs> moments with Santana, though, were when she was sharing her feelings for Brittany. I think some of those were some of her most real moments, and those are the, those are the ones that I really enjoyed. So back to speaking of forced, we should talk about the music. Yes. I mean, isn't that the whole conceit of the show? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if anyone didn't know what Glee was and listened to this podcast, they'd be like, wait, this is a musical? (laughs) Yeah. Based on what we've talked about so far. So they sing, they dance, they sing better than they dance most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unless you're Britney and it's the other way around. Yes. (laughs) What did you think? What did you think about the music? There's Aspect, any of it. so much I loved and so much I hated. Yeah. It was always either I loved it or I hated it. Basically, Glee is the ultimate jukebox musical. Because mm-hmm. it's yeah. just like, whose songs can we throw into this episode that, you know, it's like throwing spaghetti against a wall. It's like, okay, we'll pick <laughs> oh seven mu- We'll pick seven songs for this episode. You have one, you have one, you have one. You throw them against the wall to see which ones become a hit and which ones don't. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, they probably didn't become a hit. And they probably... I don't think there was hardly any artistic aspect to it, at least not towards the end, where it was just like... it It was basically a business decision, where it's just... How do we get the most out of these songs, out of these singers? And... There were some great performances at the beginning. I, I will maintain till who knows when that their their don't stop believing at that on that pilot is a great so song good. and a great cover and a great way that they did it and it was it told the story in that pilot episode. It was mm-hmm. the way a song was supposed to be used in a musical. It yeah. told part of the story. You take that song out. And it doesn't enhance the story in any way. Well, and if it could do more of that, it would have been awesome. But yeah. Yeah. you know, true confession. I actually I didn't buy anything. I think somebody owned it and I burned a copy. But I did listen to the Glee season one soundtrack, mm-hmm. the Glee yeah. season two soundtrack. Sure. I think because at that point they were like really trying without trying over trying yeah mm-hmm. to make the music fit the topic of the episode yeah yeah but then it kept going and we got the event episodes oh yeah i was just gonna touch base on that I, I, Madonna, I, I, I was gonna John, say some of them Spears. some of them were really good yes the Fleetwood Mac one, yes, I, yes, I loved right. the Fleetwood because they did one. the rumors album and it was yes and i just i i, I mean it. Yeah, they talk, They talked about that in that episode, how that album is so iconic. So I'm, I'm glad that they did things like that. How do we feel about the musical episodes? Like, Glee, Glee, and Rocky Horror Glee Show. That's where uh. I was going for. 
Yeah. More yeah. Than I was going for because yeah. you're right. I did like the, if I liked the music or the person, the artist they were covering, then I was into it. Like the Fleetwood mm-hmm. Mac episode, well, yeah, true. I, mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Madonna episode, great. I'm not a big Lady Gaga fan. I appreciate her on a yeah. level. I didn't need a whole episode of Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was very of the moment. I think what I'm about to say is going to be unpopular, but I actually enjoyed the Rocky Horror episode because they fixed it for me at the end. The whole time I'm like, you can't do this at school. You can't do this at school. You can't do this at school. Oh, yeah. you realized you can't do it at school. I got it. <laughs> I thought that okay, I, was I liked how there were different people playing the characters and how some of it took place in rehearsal. Yeah. And some yeah. of okay, it there was stress. And then yeah. John Stables. Forget yeah. it. Actually, the Rocky Horror episode was the better of the musical. Yeah. yeah. The first one was poop. <laughs> Yeah. Let's have Please. a fantasy montage in the middle of it of Finn and Rachel. Yeah, that I hated Stupid. the Grease one. Also, that song is not in the musical. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> yeah. It's a different song. Yeah. So, What's the other musical that they did? They did another one. Rachel was doing Cabaret, but then she quit. Or oh, West Side yeah. Story? No, they were going to do West Side Story. Mm-hmm. And they, there was, I thought there was another big musical episode. I don't think so. That was... I don't yeah, know. I'm drawing a blank. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, they did love, Saturday Night Fever, Love Actually. The, the event episodes they had were Madonna, Lady Gaga, The Rocky Horror Show, Michael Jackson, Saturday Night Fever, Whitney Houston, Britney Spears, Grease, Love Actually, The Beatles, and Billy Joel. Okay, I don't remember the Saturday Night Fever one. That one is the one out of that whole list that I am completely Lots drawing. Of PGs. A- I should go I, back and watch it, considering what I just got done doing. I would have missed the I missed the Love Actually episode. How'd they do that? Yeah. It was basically doing the sort of the piecing together of all the different couples interchanged, and they sang some of the songs. Okay. I think it was Love Songs. Okay, all right. But they called it something around Love Actually, because they oh, were okay. the movie. Okay. Their Christmas episodes, there was... One that I really enjoyed, the one that they set up like a talk show, like a show, like they had the slot on TV or whatever. I hated that. <laughs> I still <laughs> liked that one. Oh, gosh, I thought that was the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> really? Well, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was cute. Of of, I didn't like their. They did like the whole. They did another episode, like the unaired Glee Christmas episode. That was clearly just an episode that they made and named it unaired Glee. Like, I hated that one. That one sucked. Was it, like, outside the continuity kind of thing? Yeah, it aired in a weird place. Yeah. Yeah, that was a weird one. I didn't like that. You know what I really liked that this isn't one of the ones, but when Quinn was giving birth, the Bohemian Rhapsody, that was good. Like, that made sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two more of that. And it was Jesse St. James who we didn't talk about. Oh, I, I yes. love Jesse St. James. Yeah. Jonathan Groff. Or Jonathan Groff. Groff. <laughs> who He's also amazing. Originated mm-hmm. on spring, in the Spring Awakening yeah. cast and is Leah Michelle's best friend in real life. Yeah. I love him. <laughs> I love him. I love that they got married at the end. That was probably my favorite thing at the, about the end. I was like, oh, that's so cute because I loved them so much. And you can't marry anyone you don't know in high school. So the no, show had to yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. back there. <laughs> <laughs> when they, that was sarcasm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> My husband and I weren't even in high school at the same time. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. True confession. True confession. True confession. Lee podcast. Yeah, I really liked that. I thought that was cute. I'm like, okay, I'm bringing her back to Jonathan Groff. I, I love, love him, him, so it was so okay. But I was like, like, there's nobody else in Manhattan that she can get with. Come on. Right, especially being a Broadway star and like just winning her first Tony. Couldn't she have met somebody in the show? Since we were transitioning to the last season now. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Segway. Here we go. You, you're kind of hitting on the end, so I kind of want to just... It's the freshest in my memory. I <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, they come back from New York. That's basically the whole gist of it. They come back yeah. from New York. They abandoned New York mostly. There's still mm-hmm. a little New York. In yeah. There. And a lot of that has to do with Rachel's abject failure, both for leaving Funny Girl to do a TV pilot that tanked, and then not being able to get back on Broadway <coughs> in Niana, the school with Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. AKA. Yeah. AKA and <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you think? It was a shorter season, mm-hmm. purposefully, to kind of give them a send-off. What did you think of it? How did you like 
that last How week. are these people supporting themselves when they slunk back to Lima? Do they yeah. not need jobs? Do Where, people not pay for stuff? Well, I don't, Rachel I, moved back in with her dads because there was that whole selling the house thing. But they mm. got divorced, and then where did she live after they sold the house? <laughs> I she love just how keep... we're harping on the reality of a it, show that is inherently <laughs> hyper reality. Because I think that was my main problem with it. I just, yeah. These are the things I think about. Oh, how convenient. You can yeah. go back and do that. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Kurt will come too? Great. Yeah, and so like, Blaine and... Yeah. I just follow my best friend from high school all over the place. Do I don't even either. talk to yeah. my best friend from high school, so it's like... <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Uh, hi, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nice. I do. So, hi, Megan. <laughs> I'm, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was the problem I had with it. Not that they were helping the Glee Club or they wanted to help Mr. Shuer rebuild it. That's great, but, like, come on. You're 21 now. Like, go have a life. Yeah. They yeah. never... So, that struggled for me. And then, like, all those Glee Project kids did just go away, and it was very flimsy. I like when Katie came back how she was mad. It was like, everyone just left me here, so now you yeah. want me to come back and do this again? No, I I'm like, sorry. Yes. And then she did. But you and know what I'm saying. Like, fine. At least they gave her that, because I was yeah. like, where did everybody go? And all those new kids that they brought in, I thought their characters... I did like the way that they showed them kind of gathering them. I thought that was kind of cute, showing Kurt and Rachel going out and recruiting all these new kids. I, I hated that they just... They didn't delve into each of their characters very much. I hated the the new gay jock kid. I thought he was annoying. Spencer. I thought he was kind of annoying and a douche. I couldn't even get into the new characters. Yeah. I was like, Why oh, no. I never new could. Kids now? Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like. The last season. I'm not going to invest in it. Because there had to be someone in the Glee Club, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I guess mm-hmm. so. Well, there was that long haired guy, but he yeah. was in the Glee Pride. Well, like, when did he. I can't remember. I don't know. I just, like, they all blur together. Yeah. I thought all of the new new directions were horrible. There was I don't think there was any of them that I actually enjoyed. They did will, not do a good job of ever <laughs> introducing new characters. It no. Like. Yeah. I will tell you as annoying as the last season kind of was, it was a sort of a pill. <laughs> <laughs> the very last episode where they every single character in the show history was there and they yeah. were singing, I was like, Oh Lord. I watched yes. it like five times in a row because I wanted more time to just look at the people's faces. Yes. And I'm a sucker for a big every finale. Big finale. Yeah. And I, I really, was crying last night. I really that. thought that was one of the best endings of a show mm-hmm. I have ever seen. And I know how that sounds. <laughs> but it worked for what that show was, and it did what that show needed to do. Yeah. I agree. And so I, I liked it. I, I recently watched <laughs> the finale of Parks and Rec, and I a lot of people are like, oh my god, I loved it. A lot of people are like, ooh, I hated it. I'm kind of like in the middle there, but then after watching this Glee finale, I was like, why didn't Parks and Rec do that? That was nice. <laughs> I have, liked that. In our, in our culture now, we kind of have this like, really high standard for series finales. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. And there are so mm-hmm. many good ones we could name. Six Feet Under and mm-hmm. MASH. <laughs> and then there are... Always mentions MASH. I do, <laughs> because somebody <laughs> called me an old lady for watching MASH, and I was like, um, step off. <laughs> <laughs> that show's a classic, y'all. I yeah. will join you for the Looking Back on MASH podcast. I said this on multiple podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, like, those set a standard. Yeah, they yeah. did. And they're not the only two. I mean, St. Elsewhere had that one. That's really polarizing, though. Yeah, like, I mean, yes. Mm-hmm. And cheers. Um, in Seinfeld, whether you like it or not, brought in a, all the characters. <laughs> and, and I thought Friends did a friends. nice job. Yeah. So it's hard. Now there's this big... you gotta, you got to tie everything up with a really big, tight bow. And if Why you don't... If not, then you have to do it in a way that leaves you feeling like either wow or... What the hell? But exactly. It's yes. Remember yes. Forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when they do get it wrong, like how I met your mother, or people lost. Uh, or lost. <laughs> All right. Now. Now. People think I back have bitterly. Fight on the last podcast. <laughs> so I don't know. I think that they ended it the exact way they needed to end it. Yeah. I, I don't agree. think they could have done any better. And. Yeah, I really, I really loved the the jumping forward five years. I don't know why they then said like twenty twenty because technically five years from twenty fifteen was twenty twenty, but they like said it again. I'm like, 
is there supposed to be another little time jump in here or what? Because you didn't do your math right, but okay. <laughs> I liked that they did that little that little thing, like with Rachel winning her Tony. Like that's what you you wanted. You wanted that to happen, yeah. For Kurt yeah, and yeah, exactly. Like you wanted that from the beginning of the series, so I really liked that they kind of took that and said, "Okay, here you go. It's done." I, I agree. I appreciated it. They I, probably should have done that for the entire season, or at least more episodes yes. than just the last one. I love yeah. that. Yes. yes. More, because you're right, the series finale was great, and it was like the, the proper beat for a hyper-realistic show. It was a hyper-realistic finale yeah. that hit all the right <laughs> notes, but I had to slog through 12 other episodes to get there. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I wish it had been 12 episodes of that Yes. That would have been a lot more enjoyable. We wouldn't have had to introduce those all those new kids. It would have been a much better way to close out it the season. It might have even been fun to like spend the 13 episodes five years into the future. Yeah. And watch them kind of get there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I don't write things. I just yeah. review them. Kind of yes. <laughs> yes. What can I tell you? Right. So I have a few tie-off questions as we do with the looking back. First of all, Ryan Murphy, of course, is the creator of this. And he's created and produced... Several other popular shows, Very including true. Mm-hmm. popular Nip Tuck, American Horror Story, which of course we are already cover at CPU. Sarah is on the panel. <laughs> the New Normal, and now Scream Queens, which is currently airing. Well, it's not; it's on hiatus, but it's a Fox active show. Yeah. And also <laughs> Feud, which just recently premiered. Have you watched any of these series? You know, AHS, we're going to kind of leave because, of course, we watch it. So. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, I don't watch any of that. And then I realized, yeah, I yeah, do. Actually, do. <laughs> Will you, either as a result of Glee or Ryan Murphy or any of its elements, why or why not? The only thing I watch is American Horror Story. I don't watch any of that other stuff. I don't have plans to watch any of that other stuff. But I will say this. It's just because I'm watching so many things right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometime down the line, I'm not I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. Glee doesn't make me want to do it per se, but American Horror Story might make me want to watch. You know, probably not Scream Queens. That seems a little. I picked it up for myself, so do you I like haven't it? watched it. Oh, yet, but, I'll well. say that's a that's and an entirely different topic. <laughs> I think I watched Popular back in the day, like on the WB. Uh huh. Yeah, I do think I might have watched that, but I, we were in college when that was on, right? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember. I remember it was on. I, don't I remember. do barely remember that show. Yeah. I am definitely a devout American Horror Story fan. I am not on the panel, but I love American Horror Story. I have I have my feelings about certain seasons, as I'm sure everybody else does. I definitely oh, cool. watched, yeah, <laughs> I watched The New Normal when it was on for a season or whatever it was. I thought it was cute. I started watching Scream Queens, didn't get into it. So it just kind of depends for me when it comes to Ryan Murphy, but I definitely will at least give him a chance because I thought Glee, if it didn't, since it didn't end that great for me, but I thought it started on a good trajectory, so I'll trust him again to maybe get something started. I like Ryan Murphy's shows from what I've seen. Although, it's interesting that you single out Ryan Murphy, because it really was more, I feel like from what I've read on like pop culture websites, it was really more of a collaboration between three people. Mm-hmm. It was Ryan Murphy, Brad Falchuk, and then there's a third one. Ian Brennan. Ian Brennan. Okay, yeah, so, like, my understanding is they would actually trade off episodes where they would, like, Brian would write one, then the other guys would write one, and some people even noticed that there was a definite, like... Sprintness. Yeah, exactly. It was, like, you, you could tell which one was the Br- Ryan Murphy episodes and which one was the Brad Fulchuk episodes. But based on Glee and that collaboration, I would be more willing to see a show that they collaborate together with again because they clearly have a good working relationship. I have watched American Horror Story. I have watched occasional episodes of Nip Tuck and was not a huge fan. I want to watch Feud. I have not yet, but it's based on his pedigree. And you didn't mention American Crime Story, which I find interesting because was that, that him? yes, yeah. it was, and that was that blew up. That was like a gigantic show. That I, I don't know if he's got creator credit or if he's executive producer. Okay, I, I feel like he was creator. involved quite 
in the when they were talking about the show, he his name came up, and I don't know what that means. Like, well, he might have directed. I always yeah. go to IMDb and look okay. at the creator credits. So okay, I, he might have been an executive producer for American Crime Story. Okay, well, that, I just remember that was a Which huge. Is probably why Sarah Paulson gets cast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that one. I just remember that show was like gigantic. I mean, it's getting lots of prestige, and I'm curious to watch it. I want to watch it someday. So I feel like having his name on something, I would be very likely to gravitate towards it, yes. So it's interesting that you demarcate the collaboration. I did do that on purpose. Okay. Because I mm-hmm. don't believe that this collaboration has happened before. Mm-hmm. And I also don't think that they advertise it or market it that way. I That's think they true. market Lee as being created by Ryan Murphy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I will say about Ryan Murphy and I think this is true. I've, of course, seen American Horror Story. I've seen a little bit of Nip Talk. I plan on seeing Screen Queens and Feud. Not popular, and I don't care about it more than New Normal, because both of those got canceled. But what Ryan Murphy has a reputation for, and what I've personally experienced, is he starts off very strong. He has really great ideas, really good story conceits, leaving no exception. Mm-hmm. but doesn't know how to put the button on them. Doesn't follow through with it, yeah. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So either he then has to pass it to a showrunner who does it justice, yeah. or doesn't do it mm-hmm. justice. So to that end, I kind of do what, I kind of do follow the Ryan Murphy pattern and watch his stuff, mm-hmm. per se, if his name is attached to it, but I don't always follow through with it, and I don't think I would just because of Glee. I don't think Glee is oh, one yeah. of the better it, examples. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oeuvre. Oeuvre, exactly. <laughs> Would you follow any of the individual ensemble actors from Glee to a new project? Why or why not? Yes. I would. I think, you know, you had mentioned in the rundown of the characters, I can't remember which one, but there was an aspect of this was a great jumping off point for so much amazing talent that if I saw, oh, that was that person was formerly on Glee, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. That will perk up my ear a little bit, is to be like, oh, I'm a little interested in that now. I mean, not not every actor on the show was a massive... Yeah, Michelle's on Screen Queens. That's right, she is, that's true. Yeah. She's really funny on Screen Queens. <laughs> Melissa Benoist is Supergirl. That's She's right. great as Supergirl, Which though. we also cover at mm-hmm. CBU. Yes. On our DCTU mm-hmm. panel. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'd be, like, if I heard Sarah that... Sarah has a thing about her. I guess. <laughs> oh, I didn't like her, the way her character was written. Oh. I think she's a good singer. I liked Marley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then, okay. I don't love her as Supergirl. Oh, okay. I have to disagree with that 100%. Okay, that's the reason why I won't watch it. But. Well, there you go. Okay, you then. Go. So you'd follow... I would follow, would yes. Follow. Mm-hmm. Anyone else want to answer that? Nah, I'm not going to. I, I, I'll answer it. I'm not going to But I'm, I'm an IMDb girl. Everything I'm watching, I'm like, oh, what were they and what were they and what were they in? Yeah. But I don't, I don't say, oh, Amber Riley, I'm going to watch something because you're in it. I don't really do that. Usually. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Usually, if it's something that already was piquing my interest, I'd go look and be like, oh, who's in it? And if I saw somebody from Glee, I'd be like, oh, okay, I know that they are talented and they're... They're a reputable actor that should give this movie a little more push, and that would encourage me. But I don't, I don't seek out all of their every single thing that they've ever done. But I definitely follow. I felt like follow Darren Chris on Instagram. I love Darren Chris. Well, that you might follow Darren Chris to a thing then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Darren Chris is one of the few that I like. If he said I'm going to be in this new musical, I'd be like, okay, I'm listening to it. Soul, because mm-hmm. I love Darren Chris, but I wouldn't do it for everybody. That's fair. I don't think I would do it for anybody. I, I, I do follow actors, and there are actors that I follow and would follow based on what I see, but I don't think anybody in Glee really does that for me. Jane Lynch had already been in many Christopher yeah. Guest movies. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really count. And party, <laughs> she was in Party Down, too. She was in yeah. Party Down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think she counts, but everybody else was basically pretty new to me, and aside from the few Broadway actors who were doing Broadway, I don't think that I would actually, like, no one in the show motivates me to be like, like you say, I'm not a foul. Even Darren Chris, but I think you're of a different age group. Than <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that one guy that plays the Flash, I enjoyed him on the Flash. Oh, yeah! Frank Gustin. We, and we didn't even bring up his weird character, Sebastian. Sebastian. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm going to sabotage. Whatever. 
but while secretly nurse a long standing crush on yeah. Lane. Yeah. <laughs> but I like him on The Flash. But I didn't watch He's The Flash because of him. I was like, where do I know him? IMDb. His <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. You're right. I didn't like him on Glee. <clears throat> and I didn't watch The Flash because he, he was from Glee. I watched The Flash because of The Flash. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because of the character. Would you recommend Glee to others? Why or why not? Or based on? I think if you want to watch a fun musical TV show. It's your only it's a, choice? <laughs> it's not your only choice. No, that's definitely not true. Yeah, there's Gallman. No. Oh, Crazy yeah. Ex-Girlfriend. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I know, you're hinting at it. Yes, I, I, you can't see my face because this is a podcast, but I'm staring directly oh, at Kylie. At this, <laughs> Ouch. Okay. No, but there are other music... It is becoming more of a thing now, and I yeah, feel like it it's helped... It's on the list. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that Glee uh, is a good example of what a musical TV show can be. It's not perfect, as we have said, but it's not cop rock from the early 90s. <laughs> <laughs> nothing is. <laughs> nothing, nothing ever. Nothing ever. <laughs> so wow, that was so like random. <laughs> it's like the only other. It was like the only other TV musical prior to Glee was Cop Rock. I mean, okay. <laughs> so. Well, I, I guess we're not counting like Kids Incorporated or something like that. Yeah, because no, well, there was no plot. Really. Yeah, yeah. It was, like a little plot. <laughs> Situationally, that's on. Kids, I remember Kids Incorporated. I used to watch that show all the time. I, th- I feel like if you, it's a. I think it's a good start starting point for musical TV. I think there are some great aspects to the show that is worth watching, at least a little bit. You don't have to. I I would not re- recommend watching the entire series from beginning to end. I would recommend it to people to be like, oh, would I like Glee? I think you would. That's what I would say. I would only recommend it to somebody who's like, hey. Is there like a musical TV show I could watch? And there you like, go. Yeah, there's Glee. It's really good in the summer on rainy days. There you go. You just want to dance around the living room with your toddlers. There yeah. you go. I Some would probably <laughs> yeah who want to watch a musical television. <laughs> yeah, it's very specific. Very specific. Or if you're looking to start a glee club at your school, maybe this could be like a an inspiration. Yeah, I was gonna say a cautionary tale. That's highly also an inspiration. I was gonna say you, we've been harping about how unrealistic it yeah. is. So. Well, I think the first season's kind of realistic. Yeah, <laughs> people are gonna throw stuff at you. But, yeah. <laughs> it, may it may be slushies. It may not be. <laughs> yeah. I would probably recommend it to the younger generations that are just getting interested in like theater and singing and choir. That's that's the age group that yeah, I would recommend that's a good, it to. That's a good I point. don't have any of my adult friends. I'd be like, oh my gosh, you need to go watch Glee. It's amazing because it's not amazing. It's good, but I think I think the younger generation is a group of kids that should appreciate it for what it is it might be able to help them start some conversations on some of those topics in there i think it would be, they're a good jumping point yes for a lot of good conversation that the younger teens should be talking about and thinking about so i think there are definitely people that you can recommend it to i don't have many of those in my life but. <laughs> she says coyly <laughs> Well, I put like this. I'm not going to be this girl, but then I am. I don't think it's a sell for anyone Generation X or older. Yeah. As I am a member of Generation X, barely, I'd have to say that I I don't know anybody in my peer group that I could say watch Glee and convincingly say, oh, yes, it's totally worth it. Because it isn't after season one. (laughs) It doesn't write it. The only reason I kept watching is because, honestly, I really loved music. Yeah. And I liked how they appreciated music. And I liked the fact that it was all different kinds of music. That's true. Not just theater. Yes. Not Mm -hmm. just pop. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, it was everything. And they did the Beatles. The Beatles are my favorite. You know, Fleetwood Mac is one of my all-time favorites. So there was definitely that. And if... I would say that if you appreciate music on that level and you can get by the fact that there are a bunch of teenagers auto tune singing some of them, <laughs> these songs, I mean, some of the arrangements are actually quite clever, but some mm-hmm. of them are not good. So I don't know 
If you like Jane Lynch, I would say this is a really good vehicle for her because she gets a bunch of spotlight. But oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know that I could recommend it to anybody. That's fair. You know, yeah. even a lot of people younger than you know Gen X. I think you have to be of a certain age group for it to resonate. Mm -hmm. Currently, you don't think it's going to stand the test of time. I do not. Mm -hmm. I think it was lightning in a bottle and it's fizzled. Yeah, it fizzled before the end of the show. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Fox exploited it. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I yeah. Know. also yeah. think a lot of it has to do with the collaborative style of these three producers and the fact that there was no real continuity and the fact that Ryan Murphy is starts off big and ends with a whimper. You know, there's just, there's a lot that kind of hurt it in the end. Yeah. And it's hard to have a show based in a high school mm -hmm. and have it go on for longer than Well, of course, yeah, seasons. exactly. Very yeah. few people have ever really figured out how to do that. Anybody, so right. yeah, like just all added together in a perfect storm of cesspool. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. I mean that that first episode is magical, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then if you get sucked in, I would say this is your warning. It, it doesn't stay <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> after That's after season two, it's kind of like. Mm -hmm. And even season two started to be a little iffy. Like, yeah, where are they going with this? Yeah, what, what happened? Season two. Season. season two had some. <laughs> really great moments, but then pretty much after season two, the great moments were few and far between. Got weird. Yeah, it got weird. weird. And also a little boring at times. Yes. Mm -hmm. At this time, at this point, is there anything else you want to say about Glee as we look back that we haven't already covered? Happy oh, trails, Glee. <laughs> Happy trails, indeed. The well, book then, has closed. The book has closed. Yes. At this point, I would like to thank Emily, Sarah, and Michael for joining me today to look back at Glee and listen as I read our little conclusory tag because it's just chock full of sarcasm. CPU is produced by Back Pocket Productions, run by yours truly, the Chief Couch Potato. And hails from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Please, if you like what you hear, take the time to rate us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or Google Play, which means could you give us some stars and maybe a few words that tell us what you think? We can take it especially if it's good, or comment on YouTube so that we can spread the word more effectively. If you have suggestions on shows we might consider that we're not already doing or planning to do, contact us at our website, couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com, by email at couchpotatoesunitepodcast at gmail.com, or you can hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Of course, we are adding new and old shows to chat about around the water cooler all the time because we really love TV around here. As always, we have several more new episodes coming down the pipe. We're available and searchable via the web. You can find us in your podcast feeds. Subscribe to us. We're everywhere. Make sure you subscribe. And then just stay up on our new events and episodes because they come out every week, every Wednesday. Until the next time you join us around the water cooler, if you do have interest and take our recommendation, such as it is, to watch Glee, it is available on Netflix. So if you want to revisit it, find yourself that little red icon and sing along with it and tell Netflix to give us a kickback for all the times we mention them. Until <laughs> next time, keep listening, keep watching, stay tuned. Bye-bye.